Here is the beginning of a gripping horror story set in the deep woods, perfect for a YouTube narration. The story is designed to be suspenseful, leaving room for continuation in future episodes. Deep within the whispering woods of Elderwood Hollow, where the mist hangs low and the sun seldom pierces the dense canopy, a tale of unspeakable horror began to unfold. The locals spoke of the woods in hushed tones, warning outsiders to steer clear, especially as dusk turned to night. But for Carter, a budding documentarian with a zeal for the supernatural, the notorious reputation of Elderwood Hollow was not a deterrent, it was an invitation. Carter arrived in the sleepy town of Marrow Creek with his equipment, a camera, several microphones, and a drone. The town, encircled by the vast expanse of the woods, seemed stuck in time, its streets lined with ancient oak trees and houses that bore the weight of forgotten stories. At the local diner, Carter met an old man named Elias, who claimed to know the woods better than anyone else. You're looking to find a ghost, young man, Elias rasped, his eyes reflecting the flicker of the diner's neon lights. But what you'll find in those woods ain't something so benign as a ghost. It's older, hungrier, and far more cunning. Ignoring the ominous warnings, Carter ventured into the heart of the woods the following morning. The forest greeted him with an eerie silence, broken only by the occasional crack of a branch underfoot or the distant call of a raven. Hours into his journey, he discovered an old, worn path that was not on any map. Compelled by curiosity and the thrill of his hunt, he followed it. The path led him to a clearing where the trees arched back as if in fear, giving room to an ancient, crumbling cabin. Its windows were dark, the glass long shattered, and the door swung gently in the wind, an unspoken invitation, or a warning. With his heart pounding in his chest, Carter approached the cabin, his camera rolling. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of mold and decay. Old furniture lay strewn about, coated in dust and cobwebs. As he explored, his camera captured shadows that seemed to flicker and move independently of any light source. In the corner of one room, he found a stack of journals, their pages yellowed with age. They belonged to a woman named Abigail, who had lived in the cabin over a century ago. Her writings began innocently, detailing her life in the solitude of the woods. But as the pages turned, her words grew more frantic, more terrified. She wrote of whispers in the darkness, of eyes watching from the thicket, and of her grown certainty that something in the woods was hunting her. Carter, engrossed in Abigail's tale, failed to notice the sun's retreat. By the time he looked up from the journals, night had cloaked the forest in impenetrable darkness. The only light came from his camera's feeble flash. It was then that he heard it, a low, dragging sound outside the cabin. Something was moving, circling, biding its time. Panic surged through him as he gathered his equipment. He had to leave, had to escape the enclosing darkness. But as he approached the door, the dragging sound grew louder, closer. He froze, camera pointed towards the door, as the slow creak of hinges echoed through the cabin. The door edged open, revealing nothing but the dense, black night. Then, out of the shadows, something moved. The camera captured only a glimpse, a flash of something grotesque, something not entirely human. Carter ran, not daring to look back, the sounds of pursuit echoing through the trees. His breaths were labored, his mind reeling with terror. He stumbled through the underbrush, the drone of whatever chased him growing ever nearer. Just as he thought he would escape, a root caught his foot, sending him sprawling to the ground. The camera flew from his grasp, landing with the lens pointed at him as he looked back at the path he had run. The story cuts here, leaving the viewers hanging on the edge of their seats, wondering what fate befalls Carter. Did he escape, or did the woods claim another victim? Only the continuation of the story will tell. Continuing from where we left off, Carter lay on the forest floor, his heart pounding in his chest as he struggled to regain his footing. The darkness around him was thick, suffocating, as if the woods themselves were closing in. His camera, thrown a few feet away, still recorded, 
capturing his terror-stricken face and the ominous sounds of the forest night. With a surge of adrenaline, Carter pushed himself up, ignoring the sharp pain that shot through his ankle. He couldn't stay here, he had to move, had to escape whatever nightmare was unfolding around him. He grabbed his camera and limped forward, using the faint glow of the screen to light his path. The woods seemed to come alive around him, every shadow twitching with potential threat, every rustle a signal of his pursuer's approach. The air was cold, biting at his skin, carrying with it a faint, unplaceable odor, a mix of decay and something wild. As he moved, his mind raced with thoughts of Abigail, her journals, and the terror she described. Was this the same creature that had haunted her? Was he doomed to the same fate? He could hear it again, the dragging, the snapping of twigs. It was methodical, deliberate, whatever chased him was not hurried, almost as if it enjoyed the chase. Carter stumbled through a particularly thick underbrush, branches scratching at his face and hands, his breath coming in short, sharp gasps. He dared not look back, fearing what he might see. Suddenly, the ground beneath him gave way, and he slid down a steep embankment, tumbling uncontrollably until he crashed into a small, rocky creek. His camera flew from his grasp again, landing on a moss-covered stone, still recording. Pain radiated through his body as he lay in the shallow water, trying to assess his injuries. For a moment, everything was silent except for the gentle gurgle of the stream and his own aboard breathing. He reached out, his fingers brushing against the cold, wet surface of his camera. Pulling it towards him, he checked the screen, it was miraculously still working. He pointed the lens up the bank he had fallen down, half expecting to see the creature looming above. But there was nothing, just the dense, dark trees and the night sky peeking through the canopy. Using the camera as a makeshift flashlight, Carter slowly got to his feet. His body ached, and his ankle throbbed painfully with each step, but survival overshadowed his discomfort. He needed to find a way out, a sign of civilization, anything. As he limped along the creek, the sense of being watched returned. It was a prickling sensation on the back of his neck, a whisper of movement just beyond his field of vision. The creature was still with him, stalking him as he struggled through the wilderness. Hours passed, or at least it felt like ours. Carter's sense of time was distorted by fear and fatigue. The creek led to a wider river, and he followed the river bank, hoping it would guide him to safety. The moon, partially hidden by clouds, cast a pale, eerie light over the landscape, creating shadows that danced and twisted around him. Then he heard it, a low, mournful howl that echoed through the trees. It was not human, nor did it sound like any animal Carter knew. It was otherworldly, filled with an ancient sorrow and a hunger. The sound made his blood run cold, and he quickened his pace, despite the pain. As he rounded a bend in the river, he saw it, a small, dilapidated cabin on the opposite bank, its dark windows like empty eye sockets watching the forest. A flicker of hope surged through him. Maybe he could find refuge there, maybe even a way to communicate with the outside world. But as he approached the cabin, the howl sounded again, closer this time, more urgent. Carter paused, torn between the relative safety of the cabin and the unknown dangers it might hold. The decision was made for him as a rustling in the bushes behind him spurred him into action. He crossed the river, water soaking his clothes and chilling him to the bone. Reaching the cabin, he pushed open the creaking door and stumbled inside, not knowing if he was walking into a sanctuary or a trap. Inside, the cabin was shrouded in darkness. Carter fumbled with his camera, using the dim light to scan the room. There were signs that someone, or something, had been here recently. A makeshift bed was laid out in one corner, and various objects, candles, cans of food, a rusty hunting knife, were scattered across a small table. He closed the door as quietly as he could and leaned against it, catching his breath. The camera was still recording, capturing every moment of his harrowing ordeal. He knew he had to keep moving, but exhaustion overtook him, 
and for a moment, he allowed himself the smallest respite. As his eyes adjusted to the gloom, details of the cabin emerged like spectres from the dark. The walls, lined with old newspapers and faded photographs, seemed to pulse with a history of hidden horrors. Each step he took on the rotten floorboards elicited a groan, as if the cabin itself resisted his presence. Suddenly, a sound from the far corner of the room snapped him to alertness, a soft, dragging noise, like something heavy being pulled across the dirt floor. Carter's heart raced. He pointed the camera towards the sound, its light piercing the darkness, but revealing nothing. The noise stopped as abruptly as it had started, leaving only the sound of his own ragged breathing. He needed a plan. The cabin, though a precarious shelter, was at least a temporary barrier between him and the relentless entity outside. He decided to explore the space, hoping to find anything that might aid in his survival or offer clues about the cabin's last inhabitant. In a small, musty kitchen, he rummaged through drawers filled with rusty utensils and broken dishes. Under a pile of debris, his hand brushed against a small, leather-bound book. Pulling it out, he wiped off the dust, revealing a journal much like Abigail's, though worn by time and the elements. The entries were difficult to read, the ink faded and the pages water-stained, but what he could make out chilled him to the bone. The journal belonged to a man named Jeremiah, who had lived in the cabin decades after Abigail. His writing started optimistic, full of hope for a life reconnected with nature. However, as the entries progressed, a transformation occurred. Jeremiah spoke of dreams that left him sleepless, of voices that whispered through the trees, calling him by name. He wrote of seeing figures watching from the shadows, their eyes glowing with a malevolent light. He paused by a stream to catch his breath, the camera placed beside him on a rock. The water's murmur was a soothing sound, but it could not drown out the rustling of leaves or the snap of a twig in the distance. Something was still following him, biding its time. Suddenly, a low growl echoed through the trees, different from the whispers and howls of the night before. It was guttural, primal, and filled with hunger. Carter's blood ran cold. The camera's light flickered once, twice, then steadied. He knew he had only moments before it would fail completely. With a surge of desperation, he picked up the camera and ran. The forest seemed to close in around him, branches reaching out like hands trying to drag him back into the darkness. The growl grew louder, closer, a sound of inevitable pursuit. Carter's lungs burned with exertion, his vision blurred with fatigue and fear. He stumbled over roots and rocks, his progress desperately slow compared to the swift, relentless advance of his pursuer. Just as he thought he could run no more, a clearing appeared ahead, a glimmer of hope in the endless night of terror. He burst into the clearing, the town visible in the distance, its buildings a promise of safety. But as he neared the edge of the woods, a shadow detached itself from the trees, its form large and menacing. The camera's light flickered again, a sign that the end was near, either of the battery or of Carter himself. He raised the camera, its dying light casting a pale, shaky glow on the creature before him. It was unlike anything he had imagined, a grotesque amalgamation of shadows and substance, eyes burning with a malevolent fire. As the camera's light finally died, Carter faced the creature, his fate uncertain, his final moments shrouded in darkness. The screen went black, plunging Carter into a terrifying darkness, his only senses now the sounds of the forest and the heavy, ragged breaths of the creature before him. Heart pounding, he could feel its presence, an oppressive force that seemed to suck the very air from his lungs. He stood frozen, unable to move, unable to think of a way out. Suddenly, the silence was broken by a sharp, echoing crack from somewhere in the woods. The creature turned its head, momentarily distracted. Carter seized the opportunity, his survival instincts kicking in. He dove to the ground, crawling frantically through the underbrush, his hands and knees scraping against the cold, damp earth. As he moved, the air around him filled with the sounds of a chaotic struggle, branches snapping, leaves rustling violently, and a series of deep, 
guttural growls that shook him to his core. He didn't dare look back, focusing only on the small patches of light filtering through the trees ahead, guiding him towards the edge of the woods. After what felt like an eternity, the noises behind him began to fade, the sounds of pursuit giving way to the natural sounds of the forest. Carter allowed himself a moment to catch his breath, lying on his back, staring up at the slivers of sky visible through the canopy. His body ached, his mind was weary, but he was alive. He knew, however, that his respite would be brief, he needed to reach the town before the creature found him again. Pushing himself to his feet, he noticed for the first time that the camera had been left behind during his frantic escape. A pang of loss hit him, not just for the equipment, but for the unrecorded evidence of his unbelievable ordeal. Shaking off the regret, he continued towards the town, the light growing stronger as he neared the clearing. As he finally stepped out of the trees, the brightness of the morning was almost blinding. The town of Marrow Creek lay just a short distance away, its quaint houses and quiet streets a stark contrast to the dark terror of the woods. Carter's relief was palpable, yet as he walked towards civilization, he couldn't shake the feeling of eyes upon him, watching his every move from the shadows. Reaching the first houses on the outskirts of the town, he was met with curious glances from early risers. His appearance, mudded, blooded, and wild-eyed, must have been a frightful sight. He tried to speak, to explain his need for help, but his voice faltered, choked by exhaustion and fear. A kind elderly woman approached him, concern etching her features. My dear boy, what on earth has happened to you, she asked, guiding him to sit on a nearby bench. Carter's story poured out in a disjointed torrent of words, the terror of the night's events spilling forth. The woman listened intently, her brow furrowed with worry. When he finished, she patted his hand gently. You're safe now, she reassured him, though her eyes darted uneasily towards the woods. But Carter knew better. As he looked back at the dense tree line of Elderwood Hollow, a chill ran down his spine. He was out, but he was not safe, no one was truly safe. The creature, the entity, whatever it was, still lurked in those woods, perhaps biding its time until its next victim dared to venture too close. The woman, seeing his gaze drift back to the forest, sighed. You're not the first to have seen something in those woods, she confessed in a hushed tone. But few have come back out. You must have a strong spirit, my boy. Carter nodded, the gravity of his escape settling in. He knew he had to warn others, to tell his story to anyone who would listen. But first, he needed rest, his body and mind were on the brink of collapse. The woman helped him to her home, offering him a place to stay until he regained his strength. Grateful, Carter accepted, though he knew that no amount of rest could erase the horrors he had experienced. As night began to fall once again, his thoughts turned towards the woods, towards the darkness that had chased him. Lying in a soft bed, under the safety of a roof, Carter found no peace. The shadows in the room seemed to move, whispering echoes of the night before. Sleep eluded him, each sound a reminder of the persistent nightmare just beyond the town's edge. And as he lay awake, watching the shadows dance, he realized the story was far from over. The creature in the woods was waiting, watching, and it would not be long before he, or someone else, would have to face it once again. As the night deepened, Carter found himself ensnared in a relentless cycle of wakefulness and fleeting, uneasy doses. The comforting boundaries of the old woman's guest room contrasted starkly with the vivid memories of the dark, sprawling woods that imprisoned his mind. Each creak of the house, each rustle from outside the window, pulled him back to the stark terror of the hollow. It was as though the darkness itself had seeped into his bones, chilling him from within. During one of his restless intervals, a soft knock at the door jolted him upright. The old woman stood there, a look of solemn understanding etched upon her features. In her hands, she held an old, faded photograph. She hesitated at the threshold before entering, her movements slow, almost reverent. 
This was my brother, Jonathan, she said, handing Carter the photograph. The image showed a young man, not much older than Carter, with a bright, adventurous smile that seemed at odds with the somber tone of their midnight meeting. He ventured into those woods, much like you, filled with curiosity and bravery. But unlike you, he he never came back. Carter examined the photograph, feeling a surge of kinship and sorrow for the woman and the brother she lost. I'm so sorry, he murmured, the weight of her loss and his own recent escape intertwining in a tight knot of emotion. The old woman sat down beside him, her eyes distant. I tell you this because I know what you saw is real. People around here, they don't like to talk about it. They fear that speaking about the woods gives it power, that acknowledging the darkness invites it closer. But silence and ignorance, they protect nothing. Her words sank deep, resonating with Carter's own resolve. He knew he couldn't just leave, couldn't ignore what he had experienced. The story wasn't just his now, it was Jonathan's, Abigail's, Jeremiah's, and all the unnamed others who had faced the horrors of Elderwood Hollow. I want to help, Carter said suddenly, the words firm with newfound determination. Whatever is out there, it's been kept secret for too long. We need to warn people, to show them the truth. The old woman nodded, her expression grave but proud. I thought you might feel that way. I have something for you. She stood and left the room, returning moments later with a small, dusty box. Inside, Carter found several items, a compass, a silver charm engraved with strange symbols, and a stack of old letters. These belonged to Jonathan, she explained. He was researching the woods, trying to understand what lived there. Maybe, maybe these can help you. Armed with these new tools and driven by a mission not just of curiosity, but of warning, Carter spent the following days planning his next steps. He interviewed the townspeople, gathering snippets of lore and whispered accounts, piecing together a map of the woods that highlighted areas of frequent sightings and strange occurrences. Each story added a layer to the chilling tapestry of Elderwood Hollow's history. The woods were more than a mere habitat of natural predators, they were a realm of something far older, far more sinister. Something that defied explanation and thrived in the shadows of fear and disbelief. As Carter prepared for his return to the woods, this time far more prepared but equally vulnerable, the old woman's final words to him echoed in his mind, be cautious, and remember, sometimes the most dangerous creatures are not those that lurk in the dark, but those that hide in plain sight. The narrative was set to continue, with Carter's renewed journey into the woods not just a quest for evidence, but a fight against an ancient silence that had shrouded the town for generations. What he would find there, and how the story would evolve, would depend on the secrets yet to be unearthed and the courage with which he faced the darkness not only around him but also within. Thus, the stage was set for Carter's next encounter with the deep, haunting expanse of Elderwood Hollow, a confrontation that would perhaps peel back the layers of mystery shrouding the woods, or entwine him further in its dark embrace. As Carter stepped once more into the dense embrace of Elderwood Hollow, the air felt thick with anticipation. This time, he was not alone, a few brave souls from the town, stirred by his accounts and the urging of the old woman, joined him. Each carried a light and a weapon, tools that felt pitifully inadequate against the enigmatic darkness that awaited them. They moved deeper into the forest, guided by the compass and the map marked with generations of fear and mystery. The woods seemed to watch them, an omnipresent observer that was both a part of the trees and something far beyond. The deeper they ventured, the more palpable the sense of dread became, clinging to them like the cold mist that swirled around their ankles. Suddenly, the group halted. Ahead, the trees parted around a clearing that was not marked on any map. The ground was blanketed with a thick layer of mist that swirled slowly, as if stirred by an unseen hand. In the center, a massive, gnarled tree stood sentinel, its limbs twisted into shapes that suggested the agonies of tortured souls. Carter felt a pull towards the tree, an inexplicable force that beckoned him closer. With each step, 
the air grew colder, the whispers louder. They were no longer just voices, they were cries, pleas for help intermingled with warnings to flee. He approached the tree, the silver charm from the box clenched tightly in his hand. As he drew near, the ground beneath the tree seemed to pulse, the roots like the heartbeats of something living, something awake. Carter reached out, touching the bark, and the voices crescendoed into a deafening scream. In that moment, a vision struck him, more vivid and terrifying than any he had experienced. He saw the tree as it once was a meeting place, where shadows gathered, where creatures neither human nor animal performed ancient rites that bound them to the forest, feeding its dark power with their malice and despair. The vision released him abruptly, leaving him gasping for air. He stumbled back, the tree's malevolent presence pushing against his mind. Around him, his companions watched in horror as the ground around the tree began to crack, dark tendrils snaking out towards them. It wants us, wants our fear, Carter gasped, struggling to maintain his composure. We need to break the cycle, now. Without waiting for agreement, he took the silver charm and hurled it into the heart of the tree. A blinding light erupted, silencing the screams and cries. The ground shook, and the tree writhed as if in agony, its limbs flailing wildly. Then, as quickly as it had begun, everything stopped. The tree stood still, its presence suddenly just wooden leaves, no longer a beacon of darkness. The mist cleared, and the forest seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, the oppressive weight that had hung over the hollow for centuries lifting in an instant. Exhausted but alive, Carter and his companions retreated from the clearing. As they made their way back to the town, the forest around them felt different, ordinary, as if a great fever had broken. The townsfolk welcomed them as heroes, relieved yet unsure about the permanence of their safety. Days turned into weeks, and life in Marrow Creek returned to a new normal. The darkness of Elderwood Hollow seemed to have receded, its threat diminished but not entirely vanquished. Carter stayed in the town, his documentary evolving into a broader exploration of the power of community and belief. As he stood on the edge of the woods one evening, watching the sunset paint the trees in warm hues, he felt a twinge of uncertainty. They had quelled a darkness, yes, but at what cost? The charm was gone, its magic spent. And deep down, he knew that such evils were never fully destroyed, merely contained. Carter turned away from the woods, a sense of uneasy peace settling in his heart. The story of Elderwood Hollow was closed, for now, but in the world of shadows, endings were merely illusions. And some tales, like the whispering winds through gnarled branches, would always find a way to be told again.